Hi, and welcome to the Advent of Code 2024. One of the historians needs to use the bathroom at EBHQ, the Easter Bunny headquarters. There are a bunch of robots in the way though. Can we predict their movement and get him there safely? Good morning, we're the guys from Germany. I'm Marcel, and I'm here with Frank. Hello, Frank. I'm Marcel. And Achim. Hello, Achim. Hello, Frank. Hello, Marcel. Hello, world. Today is the 14th day. So, well, today is about um, finding a Christmas tree. I mean, it's the best time to set up a Christmas tree anyway. So, um, yeah, but we had to find a, tr a Christmas tree in a bunch of robot positions. So, today we're going to share the solution in two parts. I'm going to start um, with a Python solution. So the task for today was we had a bunch of robots that were that had positions and velocities. So they had a starting position and a velocity and an area. For the example, the area was 11 uh, positions wide and 7 positions high and you had to um, calculate basically where these are, the, the, the robots are after 100 seconds and if they go outside of the area where they are in then they teleport to the other side so basically um, like uh, like the game uh, Asteroids, I think it's called. Yeah, uh, I solved this by first parsing the input using a regular expression. Uh, pretty simple, just a position with uh, a, a digit or well, a, a number of any any number of digits and a second number. The velocity can also be negative, so I added a uh, an optional. Uh, negation character and then I parse these as an integer vector I used uh, the GLM library for this or PyGLM library for this um, yeah so I basically read through all of the inputs and parsed them into positions and velocities as an integer vector and then I created a simple function that move that does the movement. Basically, it adds the velocity to the position and uh, does a modulo operation uh, for the area size. Since this modulo can also be negative, I add the area size to it and then do the modulo again to assure this is a positive result and then I simply add the um, or put put uh, the new position and the new velocity into a new tuple return that and I do this over and over again a hundred times for uh, all of the inputs uh, or for all of the positions and well then finally I can just print the um, basically I just <coughs> filter the the uh, resulting inputs um, by a quadrant which I think I've moved somewhere or yeah it's down here <laughs> yes I even reused this for part two even though I didn't need it I filter all of the uh, positions in quadrants because you had to do that for the puzzle uh, so basically top left top right bottom left and bottom right and you don't need to take into account the, the middle so the horizontal line and the vertical line don't count yeah I simply uh, checked for the positions which are in the respective region so less than oops 
less than the middle on the x-axis, less than the middle on the y-axis, and so on. Alright, that was part one. I had some trouble with part one because I had uh, an error in this equation. For whatever reason, I had uh, the equation written like this, so I was checking the same quadrants twice. And yeah, I didn't realize that I had this error. <laughs> so I was uh, a bit confused at first. Looks like a copy and paste error. You wrote it once and then you copied it three times and just changed some some parts of it and forgot one. Yeah. yeah. And since I was so tired, I <laughs> must have <laughs> simply forgotten to change the second part. Yeah. All right. For the second solution, second part, uh, I'll hand over to Frank, who has a solution in COBOL. Yeah. Thank you. So I will share my screen to show it. So the second part looks like this there. It asks us after some number of steps, uh, there should be a picture of a Christmas tree. So uh, what I did is I, I implemented a function that displays this thing in ASCII uh, uh, art onto the screen and then uh, I, I stopped my program for some keyboard input after each display and then hit the enter button several times. So uh, unfortunately uh, after like 500 times hitting the enter button I didn't notice any Christmas tree and uh, so I had to think about but then I, I had some some obscure thing on the screen this was after the 40 443rd step i i saw some cloud of of x's on the screen and after the 546th step the same again so i concluded in head this must be something every 103rd step in my input there is some special cloud so then i i had in my my display grid function i did something like this if if uh, my actual step count current minus 443 mod 103 is zero then I do actually the display else I do it not and then so I display only every 103rd thing and then if I run this it looks more or less like this so here above you see something like a cloud and then we can hit the enter button more or less often and I do it sometimes and then because I know now where the Christmas tree comes I can stop there the sooner or later the nice picture comes up now where is it here it is <laughs> so then it looks like this after for me 8186 steps so this was a little fun here to search what what the actual riddle is and how it looks like because it was no mathematical formula or something like this more like trial and error yeah well from the code it's uh it's um um cobalt code it looks like cobalt code so i i actually used a simpler parser i did in my editor uh, removed all the clutter from the numbers so I have only four numbers per line which is simpler to parse because uh, implementing these parsers in COBOL is a uh, pain every time so I simplified the input uh, yeah then the modulus I was not sure about the modulus so I implemented a modulus calculation by hand when it goes out of the grid so I do until it comes into the grid I add the 101 and until it's in the range i remove 101 and the same on the other axis so to be sure this is the modulus calculation i was not sure about it sometimes it returned negative values and then i didn't know what to do with it uh, so i i threw it away and did by hand yeah and the display is uh, fairly simple it's a two-dimensional arrays of strings so I initialize alts with uh, uh, spaces and then put these x's into it where the robots are after the current number of steps. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty cool. Thank you for sharing your solution, Frank. All right, thank you for watching and hope to see you tomorrow. Goodbye.
Goodbye. Bye.